All right, good morning, Harvest. Come on in, grab a seat. I know it's a new setup. You gotta find out where to sit now. But as soon as you find your seat, let's stand together, begin our worship service. We're gonna be singing one of our new songs, I believe, so let's clap our hands. Let's have some fun, let's join together, let's praise our awesome God. together let's worship let's proclaim that we are not ashamed of Jesus no I'll never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ how could I ever walk away from the one who saved my life no I'll never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ how could I ever walk away from the one who saved my life. No, I'll never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How could I ever walk away from the one who saved my life? I'll pray. I'll praise you, God the Father. I'll praise you, Christ the Son.
this new setup. What do you guys think? I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, so if you, uh, we're here for prayer and praise. We tried out the setup for prayer and praise night, and it went well. But we spent a lot of time, our team, including the volunteers, praying about it, thinking about it, trying to find a way where we can, you know, change things up a little bit here for everyone in church, keep you on your toes. <laughs> kidding. Um, but we thought it had a much more family feel, um, a lot better view for everybody. You're not so far away. Everybody's a lot closer to us here. So we hope you enjoy um, the new setup. Um, I was surprised to find out it's the same number of chairs, but we look like such a, I don't know, more homely, more, everybody's more together. Uh, it looks a lot more full this way. So I'm, a, I'm definitely a fan of that. So um, next, we're going to have the ushers come forward. One thing that didn't change are connection cards. So those are at the ends of the aisle. We ask you to fill one of those out and pass it down the aisle to the outside. Um, if you're new here, we like to have these filled out for new people as well as returning people to our church. It's a way to check in and let us know how we can pray for you. So fill that card out, tear off the piece of paper, tuck it in the side, and then pass it on to the next person. The next announcement we have is the couple's prayer Zoom coming up. So if you're interested in learning how to pray better, more consistently, as a couple, this is a Zoom for you. We encourage you to sign up to attend this. It's going to be um, conducted by Pastor John Meldrum. Again, if you guys did any of our other Zoom um, events, I guess you could say, um, Mel John Meldrum is going to be doing this one. Uh, not only will you learn how to pray together, but there will be some time where you can actually practice the praying. So if you're interested in that, um, sign up on the app or check out Harvest Happenings for more information on the couple's prayer Zoom. Next one event that I'm really excited about as a mother and as a member of a family here at Harvest is our parenting conference. It's coming up in January and we have a bunch of different topics that we're going to be covering. Um, so one of the things that stood out to me a lot was one that talks about keeping a gospel centered um, in your parenting, just that reminder of how to keep gospel centered. There's a lot more details in Harvest Happenings about the different seminars that they're going to have. Um, and this event is totally free. So we encourage as many people that can come. The event is free, the child care is free, and the meals are free. So we want to try to get a really good idea of who's going to come. So don't delay in signing up. If you know you're interested, go into the Harvest Happenings email, go on the app, sign up for that event so we can start planning, make sure we have plenty of food, lots of child care for everybody involved. So that is our parenting conference coming up in January. And then finally, we have giving. On the screen, there are four ways to give electronically. If you prefer to give online, the ushers are coming down. They're going to pass the offering there. So either check it out online or pass in person. There's no obligation for the visitors to donate. This is an act of worship for those of us who call Harvest Home. And with that, we'll pray before we continue on with our worship service. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to gather here today in this awesome space, and thank you for those who are so dedicated to making this a wonderful experience to raise your name and to praise you in this environment. Lord, we just thank you for providing um, the rec center here to allow us to gather together, um, and we just ask that you'll watch over us and protect us, help us to open our hearts to the message that Ricky's prepared, um, a message from you that we'll be able to take that to heart and really apply it to our daily lives. Lord, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Philippians 3.20 says, But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. This verse gives us great hope that as much of a gift as life on earth is, this is not where we will be forever. In fact, I know much of us uh, can relate to and share just hard things that have happened, right? Throughout life, there's the brokenness of this world that um, whether it's the loss of a loved one, it's a strained relationship, um, something difficult at work, or just in your personal life as you go out and about, it's clear that this is not how things were fully meant to be, right? But our citizenship, where we live as Christians, as followers of Christ is in heaven. So we know without a shadow of a doubt that even as we live and as we serve God here, that a day is coming where we will get to go home, truly home to heaven. Their day is coming um, in the future where Christ will actually return and make all things new and make all things right. And so as we sing this next song, this 
song is very special to me as a song that came out just around the time where we had lost, um, sorry, where we had lost a child. And this song, this hope that our hope is in heaven was just an anchor for uh, me and my wife's hearts. So please stand and sing this song with us. To breathe the air of heaven Where pain is gone And mercy is To look upon The one who bled to save me And walk with him For all eternity There will be a day
darkest life, the darkest day in history. There on the cross they made for sinners, for every curse is blood at all.
confess as every knee bows before you and declares you are Lord. We sing it now. We sing it over our, our city. We sing it over our congregation. We sing it to you, God. And you are worthy of all the glory and honor and all the praise. We ask as we step into this next time of worship, giving communion, that you would fill our hearts with gratitude and thankfulness for the blood that was spilled and the body that was broken. In Jesus' name. My name is Joel Keener. I'm one of the small group leaders here. And this morning, I'm just going to lead us around the time of communion. Um, the ushers can go ahead and come on forward. They're going to be handing out the bread and the cups as I speak. So hopefully we can work through that. Um, it's interesting this morning, I didn't work this out with Drake, but a, a lot of these songs are about the kingdom. And my word this morning is about focusing on the kingdom of God. So I'm just going to read from Luke 22, I think you're all familiar, you don't need to turn here. Um, and the, when, when the hour came, Jesus reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. So this is a passage that I think a lot of us that do communion on a regular basis are familiar with. And we know that Jesus instituted communion so we can remember his, his suffering, that's the bread, his sacrifice, which is the blood, but he also twice there says, until it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. So he reminds them of not only what he's done, but also his go forward plan, right? And we sang this morning two or three songs about God's kingdom. And, um, you know, and his kingdom is in the future, but it's also now. And so I want us to focus a few, for a few minutes this morning on what that means, the now part, right? We always get excited about the future part, but we have a job to do. We're here. We're, we're serving Jesus. And... Um, in case there's any doubt about that, by the way, in Luke 17, the Pharisees were quizzing Jesus about what the kingdom is, and Jesus says, you're not going to look around and say, oh, here it is, or there it is. It's already here. The kingdom of God is in the midst of you. So so what does it look like for us to serve in God's kingdom? Um, in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus says, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. So his kingdom here on this earth has to do with us or somebody doing his will, and we're going to assume that somebody is us this morning, right? So one of the things we at Harvest do quite regularly in our small groups, I hope, is we try to get our small groups to say, hey, where do you see God working? And, and we do that for two reasons. One is it's encouraging to be able to look at your life and say, I see where God's working at this in this way through my life. But it's also to help us to be on the lookout for opportunities to serve, right? As we go, as you get up in the morning and you get out of bed, it's really easy for us to be like just dragged along by the daily grind, right? And 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 you forget, okay, I'm I'm here for more than just going to work. I'm here for I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve in God's kingdom now, until one day in glory I can say, All hail King Jesus. And 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 like this morning we have people serving all over the place, and that's fantastic. That's one of the things I love about Harvest. But it doesn't end at noon today, right? It goes there's a whole other week that we have to go through and we're supposed to be serving in God's kingdom. Not serving because, oh man, we've been asked to be servants, but serving because there's a kingdom that that we represent. Thanks. So sometimes I struggle, and probably some of you, with being like, okay, I don't really know how to serve. It's all great to say that, but I'm not called to be a missionary. I'm not a pastor. I'm, I, I don't know what that looks like. And and I think one of the pastors did a, a series on James a couple years ago. I don't know. He Months ago, and James 1 5, he tells us, and this has come in my mind a few times in the last, or a lot of times in the last two years, or a few months. James says, If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith without doubting. And so I, I think sometimes when, it's, when it comes to serving, or how are we serving God's kingdom, or what does that look like, 
it starts with prayer and it starts with a prayer of faith it starts with faith coming before God and saying God what would you have me to do today or this week or this year and then not only that but then as we do what we said in a small group as we look for opportunities to serve I, that prayer is answered in the circumstances instead of us saying oh wow that was weird that I met that person today at the at the mall we go into it from the perspective of oh I prayed this morning that God would show me what he had me to do and wow look what he did today and so I think that looking for God's will it starts with a prayer of faith and then when we see the answers when we see little things happening instead of us just chalking that up to coincidence we say oh there's an opportunity for me to serve right so um, what does it look like for us to serve I don't know it's it's different for everybody I wouldn't the worst thing I would want to have as an answer is oh at harvest here's how we serve God we don't want to be a one way to serve church what thrills me about harvest is when when I come here and it's not about all oh, the ice cream social or it's not about fall kickoff or chili the chili was good but it's not about that it's when I talk to individual Christians here and they say here's how I'm serving God in his kingdom right whether it's uh, helping out single moms whether it's going to Nicaragua or going wherever Bailey is all around the world or a Bible study or school or I'm teaching at school in a faithful way or I'm a student and I'm and I'm representing God in school or I'm leading a Bible study at school or like you're all doing different things but that's what it looks like to serve God in the kingdom and as as we serve God individually as we see opportunities we say oh there's a chance for me to serve him then harvest is doing awesome if, if we just let harvest tell us all things to do that's that's not what it's about so communion is a reminder that we are all together serving God for his kingdom so this morning I want us as we eat as we drink I want us to be thinking about how is it that I'm serving and not only me by the way how is my neighbor serving we're here together Jesus ate with his disciples together we are together doing this this morning so part of the reason for that is so we can think oh my fellow believer over here is serving in this way and then I know it's hard and I know this is past but someone just lost a kid or some things that are going on we know the hard things so it's not just where am I serving it's also where's my fellow Christian serving and coming alongside them and encouraging them in their service for the kingdom so let's take like 30 seconds just to reflect in our own minds about where we're serving where we could just asking God to show us ways to serve hopefully changing our lives in a way where we are regularly asking for this and then we'll this morning I thank you for this church I thank you for um, just this service this morning Lord the, the worship we've already already enjoyed and thank you Lord for your kingdom thank you that you are the king and one day even today we can sing all hail King Jesus but one day we'll sing that and it'll be right face to face with him and so father in the meantime though I ask that you would help us as Christians in this world I know it's hard sometimes the things we do involve tears they're difficult but help us as believers to be looking for where we can serve you be praying about it and help us as believers to be encouraging each other and to be celebrating the opportunities for service and supporting each other and loving each other and so as we as we eat this bread and drink this cup lord thank you for your sacrifice thank you for your suffering lord but thank you all for your future plans and
worship it's been. And we're grateful that um, as we, we get to continue from, from your word through Pastor Ricky, we just pray that you'd fill up with your Holy Spirit to share um, what's on your heart, that you communicate clearly with love, with truth, and grace. Um, we thank you for this morning to be together as the body of Christ. And we thank you for um, those that have been coming years and those that might be their first day. We're grateful for each and every one of them. We love you. We pray that you would be glorified in this. Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. 